What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite cameras and that is the Polaroid SX70 Sonar which is an instant film camera that was produced I would say in the mid 1970s. It was produced by Polaroid and Edwin Land which at the time this was his dream um, camera. Uh, this specific one actually, the one that has auto focusing because he basically wanted wanted to make a camera that simplified photography. You wouldn't have to worry about doing any manual focusing. Although this camera does have the ability to manual focus, this was his goal was to make a camera that you didn't the less you do the better. So this was basically his masterpiece. Um, you could say it was his greatest work of art in probably his opinion and uh, probably many other people. Um, I know a lot a lot more people prefer the SX-70 Alpha 1 model, um, but they're pretty much the same. The only difference is this has an autofocusing capability, which is this sonar comb, honeycomb looking thing here, which what it does is it sends a sound wave which bounces back and basically tells the camera where to focus um, or how many meters to focus um, so let me get into some specs of the camera it is the lens is a four element glass lens 116 millimeters and an f8 aperture the aperture ranges from f8 to f90. Uh, it shoots at 180th of a second, being the highest speed, down to about 5 to 10 seconds. Uh, the camera features an SLR like viewfinder where you look through the viewfinder and you basically see what you're going to get and um, I gotta say the viewfinder is nice and bright it's, it's really easy to manually focus and frame the shot and I would say it's pretty accurate it's about 100% uh, it's about 100% accurate what you see through the viewfinder is what you're going to get I would say it's about 98% accurate um, I would say maybe you get a little less. I'm not sure. Um, I guess that's up for uh, for debate, but that's in my opinion. Um, anyway, the camera also features a tripod mount, which comes in handy if you want to do uh, some sort of long exposure uh, night photography. Which, believe it or not, this is an instant camera that's built for night photography and nowadays that is something pretty hard to come by. Uh, this is the shutter button. This obvious red button here. This is the latch to close it. And you open it by pulling back on this. Pull it all the way up. It's open. Um, there is no on and off switch it's on as soon as you open it and it's off as soon as you close it. Uh, this camera does not take batteries. The battery is built into the film. Polaroid no longer makes instant film for this camera. They stopped making it around 2008 I believe and now there's a company called Impossible Project that makes film for it. I'll get into that in a second though. Um, to manual focus you have to push this button down once you do you'll see that the, a red appears right here when that happens you're allowed to manually focus if you want to go back into autofocus you just push it up you can autofocus um, don't block this this is uh, where the where the metering happens um, there's a light in and dark in, dark in ex, uh, exposure compensation. 
Um, now I'm going to show you how to load the film. This is impossible black and white. So once you take it out, there's going to be, there's usually a quote um, or, or a saying or an image on the, on the front um, dark slide. So this is a trick. In order for you to always know how to put it in the right way, if you're new to Polaroids and instant film, um, the text basically has to be facing this way. So let's say, so it basically has to be upside down. When you see it, it's upside down. You press this latch here, lowers it, see? It's upside down. You insert it in like this. Make sure this is always in the bottom. These two uh, metal things here that are actually batteries, they have to be face down. So you put it in, press it in all the way. Once you close it, it should eject a uh, dark slide. And that's how you know that the camera works and it's, and it's, and it's functional. Um, so now when I have pressed, you're going to hear it autofocus. Yep, that's pretty loud, right? So that's how it autofocuses. So now the battery is fully functioning and um, and I'll get into um, other my other opinion um, on the other SX70 camera. This is the SX70 Model 3. Um, it's it's an okay camera, honestly. Uh, it's not my favorite. Um, it's it's more of a zone focusing. You see, it has what looks like a viewfinder here. But you actually just frame it, and then you guess the the measurement of uh, focus through this scale focusing here. It says um, it's under 10 feet. I believe it's 10 inches all the way to infinity. Light and darken, just like the SX70 sonar. Um, it opens the same way. It has similar features. With this camera, I'm not sure if it's all SX70 Model 3s, but I've had issues with the metering. I've had many images wasted. My hit rate when it comes to shooting with this camera is 50%. So if I have a film pack with eight shots, four shots are keepers, the other four are completely wasted. Um, which is not a good thing because impossible film is very expensive. It's $24 a pack. And when you like taking a lot of photos, that could really get pricey really fast. So I would say it's 50 to 60% success rate. When it comes to the SX70 sonar, my success rate is somewhere around 90% to 90% and up. Um, there's times that I either overexpose or underexpose an image or improperly expose an image or I would manually focus and somehow mess it up uh, but most of the time it's it's pure greatness coming from this camera I have I don't have a lot of complaints um, there is a little slot up here which is where you can put an optional flash um, which is this? This is one of one of the optional flashes. This is the old school one that they used uh, back in the day. Um, this camera doesn't really necessarily need a flash unless it's a style you want to go with. Shooting with flash, um, flash is not necessarily my thing. I like using available light for all my work, so I never use flash. This just came with the camera, so. Uh, but if it's if it's your thing, I know they have electronic flashes. This is not an ele electronic um, flashes. These are actually just bulbs that sort of explode when you take a shot. Um, it's cool. It's old school. I'm honestly probably never gonna use it. It only has two bulbs left here in the back. Um, yeah, but it's I, it's more of a novelty item I have no intention of using it um, 
So, my advice if you're new to using uh, the Polaroid SX70 is first of all, the first pack of film you go through is going to be a test pack because you're going to have to learn how the camera works and how the film works together. Um, black and white film and color film are different. I noticed that color film it's a bit more contrasty and takes a hell of a lot longer to develop. Black and white film is uh, sharper. I don't know. It's a bit sharper. It's a bit brighter. It's way faster in development time. I prefer black and white film for the SX70. I don't think Impossible has yet to come up with a good enough solution for color film as of yet um, I'm pretty sure they will but for the time being I I've only shot about two to three packs of color film and I haven't really been that satisfied by it as I am with shooting black and white when I shoot black and white film I am always happy with the results I get I have a pile here of a bunch of black and white images that I took today. Um, so yeah, your first pack of film is going to be basically your test pack. You're going to have to learn. For me, what I like to do is I, I, I have to um, compensate to make the image darker. Because for some reason, the ISO on this SX-70 film is a bit too... Uh, sensitive for the camera so basically you have to make you have to go here on the compensation meter and put it uh, to darken and I only put it just a small amount maybe one fourth one third of the amount up and I find that my shots come out better when I do that um, there's times when I get blown highlights it does suffer from those type of complications. If you're shooting something that's backlit, you're gonna have to expect uh, you're gonna either lose um, information in the highlights or in the shadows. And, um, you know, you know the deal. If you know about photography, you know um, what I'm saying when I say you lose information. Um, your highlights are gonna be blown. You're not gonna be able to tell what's in the highlight. Um, or for instance the shadows might be too dark and you won't be able to tell what's in the shadow so it, it gets it gets complex you have to find a middle ground basically um, it's a it's a good camera it also focuses pretty close 10 inches so you can get some some sort of macro work in there um, it's great for all environments it's small collapsible um, you could pretty much fit it in a bag a small bag you could fit it in a jeans jacket pocket a pea coat pocket uh, even the back of your pocket which I don't suggest because it's pretty big <laughs> um, it's definitely more convenient having a camera like this than having um, an old school uh, Polaroid like this one. This is the 600 Sun. This is a huge camera. Uh, I would not recommend this one. I, I this one was given to me um, by a friend, and I've used it about I've used about two to three packs of film it. But for this, the minimum focus is uh, four feet, and it's. Um, not autofocus, it's not zone focus, it's just uh, fixed focus, which is four feet to infinity. Um, if this is your thing, I mean, it's, it's a cool camera, but I like having creativity, and this doesn't allow you to be as creative as the SX70. Another instant film camera that I use is the Instax 300, and as you can see, it's a lot bigger, it's a lot thicker. And when it's on, I mean, you know, it's a huge difference. Um, this one has two focus zones, three to infinity and uh, 
0.9 to 3 meters. Um, but as I was saying, this is a very convenient camera, very easy, easy to walk around with and um, sort of shoot around. Um, it's a camera that won't get in the way when you have it, which is something that I, I am starting to appreciate more as I am getting into the art of photography and the art of being able to capture the moment. It's good to be able to have something that isn't going to get in the way or inconvenience you or inconvenience anyone else. Uh, for instance, having a DSLR or anything huge that you have to lug around or, or make somebody feel uncomfortable when you take it out or, you know, anything of that sort. With something like this, it's small, compact, open it. Take a shot, put the shot away, close it, that's it, simple, you know? You know, with other cameras it's a bit more complex, it's, you know, uh, yeah. So, uh, so I recently took this camera out um, to Central Park. And I had I had intended to take it out and shoot maybe two or three um, shots, two or three frames, and put the rest of the film away and you know use it for another day. Lately, I've been really obsessed with instant film, and I've been going through it like crazy. So I've been trying to set a goal to make a pack of film last a week or more, and. Unsurprisingly, I got a pack of film today, and I finished that pack of film today. Um, so uh, I thought I'd show you guys a video, some video clips of uh, what I did in Central Park and around New York City with this lovely Polaroid SX-70. So that pretty much wraps up my review on this camera, my thoughts on it. Um, uh, I think this camera is good for anybody who's into taking instant memories, but at the same time, somebody more on the end of um, being a creative and being able to shoot in all types of environments. This is the camera for you. It's, it's for every environment. Um, if you get a flash, you could go to a party and take um, photos at parties. Uh, if you go out shooting at night, you could go out with a tripod, um, screw it on a tripod, take long exposures. If you're into landscapes, this is great. If you're into portraits, this is great. This is, I got it actually for portraits, um, although I have lately been taking more photos of sculptures because um, there's a lot of nice sculptures in New York City and I um, and I've been setting a goal to go and see more and take more photos of sculptures and such uh, so yeah this is um, I would recommend this camera um, the price range is anywhere from 80 to 
80 dollars and up. Um, Impossible refurbishes them and sells them for about three hundred and ninety nine dollars. I don't recommend um, getting it from them. I mean, unless you have the money to spend and you really love instant film, then yeah, sure, go for it. But if you're trying to save money, um, you know, just go to eBay, look for a trusted seller, or or go on Craigslist or. Um, uh, a Facebook um, selling um, local um, group. Uh, I got this one for a pretty good price. It was actually around a hundred bucks, um, and it came with a, a bag and a bunch of stuff, and and it works perfect. It's the previous owner took really good care of it, and um, and now I'm taking really good care of it. I love it. Um, I do plan on changing the skin for it. Um, putting a new one on it. Currently the black one is a bit distressed, although I do think it adds some character to it. I'm not sure. I mean, you guys can give me your opinion on whether I should change it or just leave it the way it is. Um, I mean, it's not too bad. It, it is kind of flapping in certain spots, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I think maybe I'll just leave it. Uh, yeah, but you guys give me your, your thoughts and uh, what do you think about the Polaroid SX70 and uh, what are your opinions on instant film in this day and age uh, do you guys shoot on Instax uh, do you shoot on old Polaroid or um, pack film uh, peel film um, 8x10 you know what, what do you guys what are, you, what are your guys thoughts on uh, instant film in this day and age and on this specific camera let me know. I would definitely like to know. Alright, this is Jay. Peace.